Thank you, Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Greens to contribute to the debate on the Anti-Discrimination Amendment Religious Vilification Bill 2023 and say at the outset that the Greens are absolutely supportive of the principle that nobody should be discriminated against or vilified, including on the grounds of their religion. The freedom to peacefully practice religion without fear of harassment or humiliation is essential to many of our multicultural communities, as we've heard. And we know that the current protections in the Act against vilification on the grounds of ethno-religion do not necessarily provide the protection to Muslims, Hindus, atheists and others in, in the broad protections. That said, the Greens have serious reservations about this bill and the context from which it emerges. And I note the previous members and ministers' contribution who said that all belong and all are valued, but sadly this bill before us today does not indicate that because all of the groups in our society that are no, not currently protected in the Anti-Discrimination Act are seeing this move today as an indication by this government that they are not protected and that all people do not belong and they are not all valued equally. And that is the reason that we have serious concerns about this bill. Under the previous coalition government, we saw a keen focus on religious discrimination and the push for so-called religious freedoms became a Trojan horse for advancing a conservative, explicitly anti-LGBTIQA plus right-wing agenda. Discrimination towards individuals on the grounds of religion may be real, and I recognize that it is real, but framing this as a paramount form of discrimination and vilification is a distraction from the bigger issues that we face as well in our society around hate and transphobia, anti-LGBTIQA+, and anti-sex work sentiments that all are missing in protections currently in the Anti-Discrimination Act. Sadly, those pieces of the puzzle minister are not there. Under the guise of extending religious freedoms, we have seen space open up for ugly rhetoric from both Labor and Liberal side of politics that suggests that ensuring the rights of our LGBTIQA plus community to simply live as they are, who they are, without exposure to hatred on the grounds of someone else's faith, are somehow up for debate and discussion. In this very act that we are amending, there are exemptions that allow for people to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexuality and their gender identity. We appreciate that this is messy and divisive legacy and that the men's New South Wales Labor government has inherited an old and outdated act. But is this really the kind of division that we are intending to move forward on right now? This is not the first time that Labor has sought to establish protections against vilification, religious vilification in this chamber. Indeed, two years ago in 2021, the Greens actually supported, I stood here right here in this spot, a version of this bill brought by the then Shadow Attorney General Paul Lynch. That support came with a caveat, that the Greens encouraged that bill on the basis that it seemed that only piecemeal review of the Anti-Discrimination Act was possible. And despite its many shortcomings, some of which will I speak to shortly, that was what was possible at the time. While we supported that bill then and the protections from vilification that it conferred to people of faith, we also highlighted that there were many other gaps that needed to be closed to ensure all community groups had the protection they deserved and called for a wholesale review of the Act by the New South Wales Law Reform Commission to do this. Now, following a change of government and men's, the men's um, government coming into power, that review is finally underway. And I and the Greens have welcomed and, con and con commend the Attorney General and all of those for finally acting on that promise that has not been realised by either major party since we all committed to it back in 2014, nearly a decade ago. This review is long overdue and the Greens look forward to the findings and finally strengthening the Anti-Discrimination Act to bring it in line with other jurisdictions in this country. But let's be clear, the timing of this bill before us today in the chamber seems to preempt the findings of the holistic review. Whether or not this is the intention, it sends a very clear message that the rights and interests of some groups in our community are more deserving of urgent protection than others. Why choose to insert protections for religious vilification now while the review is underway when parallel protections for bisexual, non-binary, intersex people and sex workers are not also on the table? Is the risk of vilification faced by people of faith so much greater or so much more harmful than these other groups that protecting them right now it's so urgent for this parliament to do, and yet those other groups can continue to suffer that vilification unprotected in the Anti-Discrimination Act while we wait for the review to convince. 
And what about the massive loopholes in the current Anti-Discrimination Act that just enshrine the right of religious organisations, small businesses and some others to be able to engage in state-sanctioned discrimination? Surely they are urgent reforms that we should be looking at. The Greens raised these concerns in 2021 when the then Shadow Attorney General Bill was brought before us and we re reiterate them now. To be clear, we are absolutely supportive of the principle that people of faith should be protected against religious vilification when there is activity that is lawful and does not negatively impact on other members of the community. But we cannot, in principle, support the strengthening of protections for one community group when protections for others who still faced increased risk of targeted vilification and discrimination on our streets, in the streets of Newtown, across our city, in their workplaces and other institutional settings are still lacking right now. There is nothing that indicates that this government is about everyone belonging and everyone being protected by acting just on this reform now. On this note, I would like to take a moment to thank and acknowledge the community groups, including Pride in Protest, Community Action for Rainbow Rights, SWAP, Scarlet Alliance, Intersex Human Rights Australia, and a broad range of civil society, human rights, civil liberties, and anti-discrimination organisations and experts for their tireless campaigning to ensure that so-called religious freedoms laws are not a way to further discriminate against people in our communities. Can I say that the Greens appreciate your activism and your act activities and we will continue to be your voice in this place. The earlier bill that I referred to in relation to in relation to the the legislation that was brought before us today supported in 2021 by the Greens provided a specific definition of religious belief and affiliation that mirrors 93Z of the Crimes Act and defines it as means holding or not holding a religious belief or view. Sadly, the bill before us no longer has that clear definition. And the PIAC, and PIAC the Public Interest Advocacy Centre, in um, correspondence with the Attorney General, Shadow Attorney General, and the Crossbench has made the point, and I quote, the protected attributes, religious belief, affiliation, activity, included in the current bill are much broader than most Australian states and territories, meaning a broader range of speech will be, pre will be prohibited as a result. Let's be clear that this bill in its current form goes beyond what other jurisdictions have done in the space and in other areas fails to limit in the same way that <coughs> other jurisdictions have done. I know that this is happening without the consultation that could be done through the Law Reform Commission process. Further, the drafting of section 49ZE does not make explicit that protections under religious vilification only reply to, apply to natural persons. Under the Interpretations Act 1987, a person such as that referred to in section 49ZE includes not just an individual, but also a corporation, body corporate or public. The choice to protect persons by this bill and not merely natural persons creates the worrying possibility that corporations or organisations could have a course of action against religious vilification. I note the opposition attorney general referred to concerns that had been raised about this applying to groups. Well, assuming that he was referring to the amendments that the Greens have circulated, the issue is not actually with groups. We recognise that this legislation covers both individuals and groups of individuals. Our concern is with the use of the phrase person and have serious concern in relation to the idea that organisations could take actions against an individual. PIAC shares these concerns and have pointed out that in practice this ambiguity, ambiguity and I quote, would allow larger well-funded religious organisations to bring vilification complaints against individuals with a potentially significant chilling effect on public criticism of these bodies. It is important to note that in this case, the issue of racial vilification, as the example that has been referred to, and religious belief are very different. It is important to note, for example, that an organisation that does advocacy around multiculturalism does not hold a race, but a Catholic church or a religious organisation does hold a religious belief. And so therefore it is our view that there does need to be changes around that. Speaker, if I can seek an extension of time, please. Um, the, the member for Newtown speaks an extension of time. All those in favour say aye. Extension granted, thank you. 
Given this, it's not a principle that the Greens are willing to support. Our concerns exist such that we believe that corporations, trusts, churches and organisations and the like should be prevented absolutely from vilifying individuals or groups of individuals, but that protection from vilification should only apply to natural persons, that is, individuals or groups of individuals. Finally, we have significant concerns over the bill's extension of protections to any form of religious activity. Akin to religious belief or affiliation and persons covered in this section, religious activity is left so broad and open for interpretation in this current drafting that takes us well beyond the established process that has occurred in Queensland and Victoria to allow any religious activity to be, um, to be uh, put, one of the protected attributes in relation to this legislation. This uncertainty is deeply concerning and the Greens would contend that there is a certain religious activity that should not attract protections, including activity that is outlawed by another act or statute. Without defining religious activity or at the very least restricting this activity to activity that is lawful, religious activity. The bill raises the legitimate questions for what protections, if any, unlawful religious activity would attract. I note that the Minister for Multiculturalism just referred to other states and said that New South Wales was being brought into line, but in this case we are not being brought into line with those other states because those other states um, provide protection in relation to lawful religious activity. Here in New South Wales, we would be, in passing this legislation unamended, providing protection beyond that to all religious activity. What would a person praying in a safe access zone outside of an abortion clinic, for example, would a person praying in abortion outside an abortion clinic in a safe access zone be in breach of Part 6A of the Public Health Act, but also have a course of action against a reproductive justice activist or a member of staff at the clinic reproaching them for breaching that safe access zone? We believe that there is a need to tidy that up. Surely we can all agree that with bigotry, from anti-queer sentiments to transphobia rising in our communities, that this kind of ambiguity is something that we cannot risk. Is it the intention of the Minns Labor government to undermine the hard-won protections around safe access zones with this legislation, or risk undermining future action taken to ban conversion practices? It is, of course, poss impossible to consider this bill in isolation from the existing and hugely problematic exemptions embedded in the Act itself that will allow religious organisations, small businesses and certain others to exist above a law specifically designed to protect vulnerable people from discrimination. The New South Wales Council for Civil Liberties in a statement released this morning put it best and I quote, we want an anti-discrimination act that does not discriminate to move on one part without moving on other glaring deficiencies sends a bad message to the community about whose rights and interests are privileged over others. The Greens wholeheartedly agree with this sentiment and to reiterate are fully supportive of the holistic review of the Anti-Discrimination Act by the Law Reform Commission in New South Wales. But the timing of this bill preempts the findings of that review does not allow the Act to be considered in a holistic way. And I indicate to the Chamber that that is why, at the very least, the Greens will be moving amendments to this current legislation before us to ensure that these amendments, which are straightforward, reasonable and have the support of anti-discrimination experts at PIAC and the Council for Civil Liberties, are a simple way to ensure that this Act is not so broad that it actually creates a whole lot of concerning possibilities that flares up the kinds of tensions that we are seeing in our community at just a time when we want to be working collaboratively to move forward on the review of the Anti-Discrimination Act. I'll speak to the details of the amendments in relation to the Greens when I move them, um, but would like to indicate that they have now been put available for all members and happy to provide any detail required. If we are in this place and we are serious about ensuring our communities are safe from vilification and religious discrimination in all its forms, we must do this with the utmost care and caution. And we need to be wary of any action that would suggest that the rights or interests of one group are more important or more worthy of protection than another. The Greens amendment seek to address some of our immediate concerns with the bill. But I want to make it clear that if we are putting a position forward that says that this Anti-Discrimination Act is intended 
to demonstrate that we allow all people to be treated equally and live free from vilification in our society, then we should not be acting separately on this piece of legislation now. We should be taking a holistic approach to the review of the Anti-Discrimination Act, and the Greens look forward to working with anti-discrimination experts, lawyers, stakeholders and activists to ensure that's where we get to. Thank you, Speaker.